Sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of conscience. And now, let us recite together the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. O oh God, you will again renew us. And you will rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you heap burning coals upon his head. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was the beginning, now, shall Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, you taught us in your holy word to pray for those who persecute us. Fill us with your gift of love that we may be forgiving and merciful toward those who seek to be our enemies, we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. On this Sexagesima Sunday, we take the first reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, Saul went down to the desert of Zimph, 
with 3,000 picked men of Israel to search for David in the desert of Ziph. So David and Abishai went among Saul's soldiers by night and found Saul lying asleep within the barricade with his spear thrust into the ground at his head and Abner and his men sleeping around him. Abishai whispered to David, God has delivered your enemy into your grasp this day. Let me nail him to the ground with one thrust of the spear. I will not need a second thrust. But David said to Abishai, Do not harm him, for who can lay hands on the Lord's anointed and remain unpunished? So David took the spear and the water jug from their place at Saul's head, and they got away without anyone seeing or knowing or awakening. All remained asleep because the Lord had put them into a deep slumber going across to an opposite slope David stood on the remote hilltop at a great distance from Abner son of Zer and the troops he said here is the king's spear let an attendant come over to get it the Lord will reward each man for his justice and faithfulness Today, though the Lord delivered you into my grasp, I will not harm the Lord's anointed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the brink of shoal I call. My heart flows, grows faint. Raise me up, set me on a rock, for you are my refuge a tower of strength against the foe. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. The second reading for today is taken from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. But the spiritual was not first, rather the natural and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, earthly, the second man from heaven. As was the earthly one, so also are the earthly. And as is the heavenly one, so also are the heavenly. Just as we have borne the image of the earthly one, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah, with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, To you who, say, who hear I say, Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. To the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it. Do to others as you would have them do to you. For if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. 
If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But rather, love your enemies and do good to them and lend expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. For he himself is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Stop judging, and you will not be judged. Stop condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. The Gospel of the Lord. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Nyek Venture for Polonius is Christus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. The New Testament account of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount are found only in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. They correspond to each other as being a part of the Synoptic Gospels. Both of these discourses begin with a large crowd gathered and with a series of blessings of Jesus, which we also know as the Beatitudes. While Jesus preached as the Word made flesh, not only did he teach great spiritual truths, in these discourses, it was also to teach humankind higher moral values and ethics which were revolutionary for his day. Those who he called blessed or happy were those and are those who were among the poor, the downtrodden, the rejected, and the destitute. Blessed are the poor, begins the Beatitudes. But in Luke, Jesus goes further, and he starts to admonish those to whom it seemed that their life was blessed. He said, for example, woe to you who are rich, for you will be poor. Woe to those who show no mercy, for no mercy shall be given unto you. In today's gospel, we read of Jesus saying, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who mistreat you. The word that Jesus uses to describe loving your enemies comes from the Greek word agape. Now agape is more than love. It is a deep, unconditional love and a feelings of benevolence toward all. No matter what one may do to another, 
our Lord teaches us that we should always strive to hold each other to the highest good. It is easy to love, as Jesus said, to those who are nearest and dearest to us. When Jesus says to love your enemy, it comes from not only the heart, but a willingness to serve God. For we read in John that God is love. And not that we have loved, but God loved us first. Agape, my brothers and sisters, is a special kind of love that comes from the grace of God given unto all who would be followers of his only begotten Son, Jesus. It should be said that the teachings of Jesus are based upon the golden rule, doing unto others as you would want one done to you. It is in forgiving, he teaches, that we are forgiven. The power of the spiritual ethos of Jesus is displayed most beautifully in the Lord's Prayer, which we call the perfect prayer. The very essence of the conduct of a true disciple of Jesus consists not in refraining from doing bad things to others, but rather in actively doing good things for others. You know, human nature, as it is, causes humans to compare themselves to others, and it is quite easy to judge when one uses themselves as a, mor a moral yardstick when comparing oneself to others. But in reality, which one of us has lived up to the directives of Jesus, who gives to all his teachings as found in Matthew 5, verse 48, to be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. What a different yardstick of judging oneself and others when comparing that yardstick to Jesus Christ. And so, as we hear Jesus say many times, let those who have ears hear. Because following the directives of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we put on the new man. And it is intended, as Jesus had that conversation with Nicodemus, to be reborn, to put on the new self, to put on the Lord Jesus. It is not I, as Paul says, who lives but Christ who lives within me. One is transformed when one follows the directives and commandments of Jesus. Did he not say, if you love me, then keep my word. And so we strive, my dear brothers and sisters, every single day against the temptations of being more human and less spiritual to others. St. Paul, in his letter to the Church of Rome, writes, in chapter 3, verse 22 through 24. And it is a foundation of our faith as we approach God. Paul says, we have all sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. Atonement. To make that sacrifice for all the sins of all that Jesus offered his blood to be that cleansing agent by which, through the blood of the Lamb, we are brought into closer communion with God. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus calls upon us to not only love one another as he has loved, but to take that extra step in showing the Christian virtue of loving and most importantly, forgiving our enemies. The saving grace of our very own salvation is dependent upon the Lord's teaching of forgiveness. Judge not, lest ye be judged. He further teaches us that by the measure 
that you judge your brother, it will be the same measure by which you are judged. And again in that perfect prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Jesus brings to us this day the standard as found in today's gospel. He says, stop judging and you will not be judged. Stop condemning and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and the gifts will be given to you, a good measure, packed down and shaken down and overflowing will be poured into your lap. This is what we call grace that God gives to us. And there is no way that we can earn that without God's help. For he teaches us, for the measure with which you measure will be returned out to you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Receive, Father Almighty and Eternal God, this immaculate host which I am in the
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, accept these gifts we offer you and lead us to love you and all people with your perfect love. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also you. Lift up your poor hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. He is right to give him thanks and praise. Father all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. You who give us the season of anticipation that takes us from the joy of your incarnation to the penitential mood of fasting and contemplation of your passion. As we prepare to abstain from worldly trapping, trappings, open our hearts to a spirit of true love and contrition. Therefore, we join this day with the voices of the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn to your glory, repeating very humbly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, in our prayers, let us remember our sick and all those who are sick, suffering, and dying. For the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. For all victims of the coronavirus, and pray for not only their health and wellness, but the wellness of their families. Let us give God our thanks for the blessings of doctors and nurses, first responders, and all health care workers who strive daily to save others. In our most deepest prayers, let us pray and remember all children who are abused and neglected, as well as all animals that are abused and neglected and for all those who suffer violence, both here and, our, and abroad. In our prayers today, let us pray for peace, for we know of the, the signs of war, and we pray that God's mercy might touch those who seek peace. Let us also remember in our prayers all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad, and pray that God's angels would watch over and protect. Let us also remember one another and all our loved ones, all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, 
but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept this offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment so grave for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you God, his heavenly Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice, into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. this Christ your Son our Lord and his blessed passion resurrection and glorious ascension we your servants and faithful people offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering a holy offering an immaculate offering the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which a high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice of immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar and to the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints, who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always crave, sanctify, revive, Bless and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit.
forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same. Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Oh, forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and vouchsafe to grant it peace and unity according to your will. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you. Who lives and reigns, God, forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in all of us, living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and the holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, prior to receiving the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us now offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen.
I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. Don't receive the word, and I shall be healed. Receive the body of the Lord.
When the Lord is pleased with a man's ways, he makes even his enemies be at peace with him. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, through this Holy Communion, grant us the grace to love our enemies and to do good to those who curse us, that our reward may be great in your kingdom. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and art one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity, and grant that the sacrifice which I, the unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found life, life for the light of man. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing, it but by God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thank you, be God. Blessings flow, praise in all creatures, hear me, Lord. Praise him. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. Rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 